Question. Yeah. How do the majority of YouTube creators make their money? Answer, brand deals. BDs. BDs. <laughs> no one calls them BDs. Brand deals are how the majority of YouTube creators make their money. Now, a year ago, we were not doing that many brand deals on this channel, like very few, actually almost no brand deals at this time. Not a lot of BDs in our life. So we really weren't making any money from this YouTube channel and it did not seem like it was a viable career path. In January of this year, we officially quit and I moved back home to the East Coast. And this YouTube video was uploaded to our channel, but never published. I never actually thought I would say this on this channel, truly, but I'm moving to Philadelphia. I actually think it's a pretty good video. It's actually a really good video. But it, 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 now it's not relevant. No. Now there's a couple of key reasons why things weren't working out for us and we're gonna actually lay those out in this video. Number one, Samir's ego was through the roof. The amount of things this guy needed to make himself happy. If that was the case, we wouldn't be making any money this year either. <laughs> <laughs> this company fuels my ego. Yeah. Look, if I was giving my ego everything it needed, yeah. we would be dead broke. We would be broke. Seriously, though. So now about 11 months later, we're sitting in an office in Venice. We have employees and we have a healthy business and we still make videos in our car. Why, why do we do this? It's so hot in here. <laughs> and all of this came down to one really crucial moment at the beginning of this year that changed everything. It all has to do with a brand that really believed in us and gave us an opportunity to pursue our dream. So as we tell the story on this episode, we're gonna talk about why creators are so valuable to brands and what makes a good creator brand partnership. And the one thing that every creator needs to do if they wanna work with a brand. So this episode of The Breakdown is in partnership with Samsung and we're gonna be using the new Samsung Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus to illustrate the graphics in this episode. When I say we, I mean Colin. Because I have much better handwriting and I'm mm. a better illustrator. And those are facts. I don't think those are facts. There's a way to decide this, which is I will do one of the graphics that you see in this episode. If they can't tell which right. one was mine, which one was yours, that means that is not a fact. Watch the breakdown. Okay, to start, let's talk about what business we're in as creators and why brand deals are so valuable. So at the core of it, we're in the advertising business. But what that means is that we're in the audience business. So as a creator, your job is to engage a specific audience and to turn that audience into a community. Now a community is based on consistency. Once you have a community that's engaged on a consistent basis, you can point them in different directions. So a creator might point them in the direction of their new merchandise. Or in this setting, a creator will point them in the direction of a brand. So the brand is essentially tapping into your community by way of your content. To know if you have a community, you wanna get a good understanding of if you have the same group of audience coming back week to week. And there's actually a metric in the YouTube backend that can help you know if you do have a group of people who are coming back week to week. So you check your watch time from subscribers. And if you have a higher percentage of viewership from your subscribers than non-subscribers, then you know that you're actually developing a real community. So this understanding of how exactly creator businesses work is a really important thing to keep in mind as we tell you this story. Okay, now let's go to the end of 2019. At the time, we were operating more like a production company than necessarily a YouTube channel, and there's a big difference. We were creating videos and telling stories for other people's brands, but towards the end of 2019, both Samir and I decided that that was not something we were really interested in doing anymore. So we shifted a lot of our effort to trying to be in the creator business without really understanding what that meant. It was kind of an all or nothing push to make our YouTube channel successful, to make it be able to support both of us financially. But at the time, even though we were uploading frequently, our AdSense wasn't really significant and the brand deals that were coming in were kind of one-offs, like they weren't renewing. But say it with me, monthly recurring revenue is the most important thing in a creator business. So we couldn't plan at all how much revenue we were gonna have in the next couple months. And this was a real problem when it came down to November of last year. We decided that it was time after almost nine years of working together that we would part ways from a business perspective. And the reason we decided in November was because Samir was traveling for the entire month of December in India. Shout out to our Indian audience. That was a great trip. Never shown any footage from it. <laughs> that was some exclusive footage you saw. We had plans to make a video about it. But... It's a great video that I got to make one day, but for now, that's all you get. So because it was the end of the year and Samir was going to be in India, I was going to be home on the East Coast for the holidays. We just knew that at that time, there were probably no more significant brand deals coming for the Colin and Samir YouTube channel. And for me, when I thought about the idea of getting a job, 
I didn't see myself getting a job in Los Angeles. I'd been here already for eight years, and I just figured if I'm gonna get a job, if I'm not gonna be pursuing this wildly interesting path, I might as well go back home and spend some time with family. So that's when I made the decision to move back to the East Coast. It was very emotional. Yeah, it was emotional, man. I mean, it was like, at the time, we have been nine years of working together. I didn't even know what a day-to-day -day looked like without us like getting together to make videos. Even when I moved home, I didn't feel like we were officially done, although we had said we were done. And there was no future business opportunity Why at that time. I feel like we're making a breakup video right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's like David and Liza. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's funny. <laughs> when I was home in January, we got an email from Samsung and they invited us to an event they were having in San Francisco in February. They also asked if we want to be on stage and present their brand new phone. We invited Colin and Samir to try it out for themselves. So this was interesting. And we had been to a bunch of Samsung events for the past like year and a half. Working with Samsung was always a dream of ours and a goal of ours. We called them our North Star brand. So it's really important for creators to have a North Star brand because if you have that brand in mind, you're creating your product to make sure that it's suitable for that brand eventually if the time comes where you actually get to work together. And that event went so well that we ended up actually signing a year long partnership with them. So not only to work with them at that event, but actually so they could support us as creators throughout 2020. All that stuff that Colin had just packed in his car and moved all the way to Philadelphia, it was time to put that all back in the car and come back to LA. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks after moving home, I pretty much made the decision that I was now gonna be moving back. I'm so grateful to Samsung for supporting us this year. Had they not, I think I always would have been disappointed that we never really took this channel full time. And this year we actually did. Like we've been going full time, just working on this channel. Now, even though our channel couldn't support us financially in 2019, there was one fundamental decision that we made in 2019 that allowed us to even lock in a partnership like the one that we have with Samsung. The thing that we did was that we defined our audience. In order for us to actually define our business, we had to define our audience. So at the end of 2019, we defined our audience into four categories. Number one, aspiring creators. Number two, career creators. Creators who are actually making their income from being creators. Number three, people who work with creators and make their income based on the creator industry. And number four, the non-believers. So this is people who don't actually believe that being a creator is a viable career, or really people who just don't know anything about YouTube. The reason why that audience group is so important is because if we can engage those first three, if we can give them a piece of content that they're really proud of, they will share it with the non-believers to either educate them or prove them wrong. So at the end of 2019, as we were writing our scripts for videos and coming up with ideas, we literally would write down these different audience groups so that we knew what types of ideas would fit those audiences. And because we defined our audience in 2019, we did start to see our viewership increase and we started to see our subscribers go up. We finally were developing a community. And once we had a community, we could interact with brands who wanted to reach that community. So one of the interesting things here is that when Colin and I first started uploading content to YouTube, there was really no framework, there was no tools, there was no guidance, there's no mentorship, and there's no really deterrent to be like, how do we actually make this a career? So as we started to define our audience, one place that we really started with was ourselves and starting to develop a community around something that we would have loved when we started YouTube, a channel that would give creators the tools they needed to succeed. And creating that environment in our community of being a platform that provides creators with tools, we naturally are able to work with brands that provide creators tools to succeed. So just a quick recap, if you are an aspiring creator, number one, define the audience you wanna make videos for. Number two, find a sustainable format that you can get consistent with because consistency will allow you to create a community. Once you have a community, you can actually create a valuable situation for brands to get access to that community and point that community in different directions. So now in 2020, with Samsung's help, we've been making videos with aspiring creators in mind and helping to give them the tools that they need to grow and succeed on YouTube. And we've actually been in development with Samsung on a show that's gonna come out on this channel called Self Taught, where we interview members of Samsung's Team Galaxy to learn from them and see how they made it as full-time creators. So we wanna give a huge shout out to Samsung for supporting our creativity and changing our lives. I mean, Colin is not in Philadelphia. He's back here in LA and we're still here, alive and kicking and pursuing the dream. 
So they've provided us with tools to empower us to be able to create content that operates as education and tools for all of you guys. And one of those actual tech tools they provided us is that Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus tablet. And when making the graphics for this video, it felt like a true writing experience, like you're just writing on a piece of paper. The screen on the Tab S7 Plus is also the largest of the Tab series, so it was nice to have a really large surface to design with. And we also got the keyboard cover case, which makes it a super versatile experience. I can go quickly from designing to writing emails. We also used the Tab S7 Plus in pre-production to prepare for filming. We were able to outline and go over feedback all at the same time with its split screen feature. And we used the all new notes app to make some edits on top of the PDF of our script and even design some of the early sketches. All right, so that's it for this episode of The Breakdown. We have a couple other episodes coming out this month. And then in December, we launched Self Taught, our collaborative show with Samsung, where we interview members of Team Galaxy. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and put in the comments if you noticed which illustration was mine and which one were Collins, because it's not a fact that he's better than me. It's a fact. It's not a fact. You you couldn't tell. If it's a fact, comment fact. You couldn't tell. It's a fact. You couldn't tell. All right, peace. Watch the breakdown. That was mine. It's it's not great, but you know, that's this one's mine. I got few things, but if you need a dollar bill in your blue jeans, I'ma throw it to you, honey, like I'm Drew Brees. I'm just happy that my crib got two. Cents.